Hey guys, it's Eric here at Farpoint Restorations. Check it out. I figured I'd make this video since I'm about to do it for real. If you ever had a car that you drive and you drive and you drive, you park it over a weekend and when you come back out, the battery's dead. Recharge it, drive it all week long, no problem. Leave it over the weekend, you come back on Monday and it is dead again or sometimes just overnight. That problem is called a key off draw. That is when we take the key out of the ignition, go in for the night, something in your car is still powered up and causing the battery to drain. The way to check for a key off draw is not difficult at all. And God knows I've made plenty of money off of people who didn't want to spend the time to figure this one out themselves, but I'm going to show it to you right now. You're going to need a digital multimeter, a DVOM or DMM, depending on which abbreviation you want to use. And you're going to, it doesn't matter. This is a fluke, but this doesn't matter at all. You can use a very inexpensive one. The Centec from Harbor Freight works just fine. Normally when we use a multimeter, we use the voltage, ohms, and annuity reading, and, this, and, and then the ground. But we're gonna change that over to the 10 amp setting. So that's the only change you're gonna to do to that. The setting on your, scan, on your scan tool, on your multimeter, is amperage DC, or just DC is listed on mine. That's the first step you're gonna do, right? And I'm gonna set this up, we'll get the camera closer in, I'll show you the next step. Okay, in the case of my old car, it's highly likely that I just have a battery problem, but I wanna check it because I've had to charge this thing twice now, and both times, uh, you know, it's, it's gone dead in the course of just a couple of days. So you wanna loosen up your negative ground, your negative battery terminal. Do not do this with the positive. The reason why is if I were to short between this positive terminal and any part of the car, I'm gonna create a significant amount of sparks and could cause a fire or damage to an important system on the car. This being an older car without computers, the damage to any kind of computer system is pretty small, but still. Okay, so I've loosened that up and taken it off. That is step number one. Step number two is this. We're gonna take our multimeter and we are going to jump between those two things. Okay, I'm making the connection between the negative battery terminal and the battery itself. You can see it jump up just for a second to 0.05 and then drops back down. That is some system on the car charging up for just a second and then going back to sleep. 0 0.01. That's exactly what I'm looking for on a car that doesn't have a draw. You're allowed 0 0.01, 0 0.02, and I mean, if you go to 0.03, you're starting to run into a slow draw on the battery, but this is about perfect. So now let me show you what it looks like when we have something that is left on. And what I'll do is I'll turn a function on in the car just to give you the idea of what, it, what to look for if you have a problem. Now this is gonna be a fairly significant draw, but just to show you what we're looking at, I've got the parking lots lights hooked up now. So when I make my jumpered connection, hopefully it's under 10 amps, there we go. And you can see that we now have 2.95 amps or 2.9 amps. It would not take much time at all, just overnight, to kill a battery if the lights were left on like this. And so that's what's going on. So let's say you have a key off draw. What now, right? Well, it's not that difficult to track down the problem. On a car like this, an older car, you simply go through and you pull the fuses one at a time. At some point, while this is hooked up like this, you're going to pull a fuse out and your amperage is going to drop back down to that normal 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03. Whatever is on that fuse, let's say it's a radio or a dome light, that's where your problem's going to be. So you're pulling fuses one at a time until you get to the one that cuts the power off. You've now located the circuit that the issue is on. And from there, you can go about figuring out what's staying on and why it's staying on. Honda Odysseys, they had a little computer that sat behind or right in the center console for the entertainment system. For some reason, they would stay on and it would cause all kinds of problems. Old Volvos used to have a problem with the dome lights or the little glove box light inside of the glove box. When you closed it, it wouldn't push all the way in to close that light. And so you would run down a battery. Also, you'd get out of the car and, and you'd look around and be like, I don't see any lights stuck on. But it was stuck on. It just was in an enclosed area. Trunk lights staying on, things like that. Dome lights staying on. A lot of problems with door locks. Turn the key to lock your doors. One of the lock actuators kind of sits in the almost locked phase and continues to draw amperage. Those are all things that can cause our batteries to go dead when we have a key off draw. 
finding it, narrowing it down from the entire car to just one circuit is what we're doing when we find a pull of fuse and it goes away. I hope this helped a little bit. This is one of the tips that mechanics definitely use every day in a shop. I guess that'll do it. Until next time, my friends, take care.